Hello and welcome to this webinar about digital transformation NDE 4.0 in the world of radiography. My name is Leonard Schulenburg. I'm CEO of the solution provider Visi Consult X-ray Systems and Solutions. We are one of the leading providers of digital X-ray and computer tomography solutions worldwide. But let's just dive right in. The topic of digital transformation is incredibly important, not only in NDE, obviously, but uh, beyond that as well. So today we want to talk a little bit about what does that actually mean? What is some of the backgrounds and context? So if we look at what does um, actually Industry 4.0 or NDE 4.0 actually mean, we look into this definition of um, the different industrial revolutions starting in the 18th century, where we had mechanical production powered by water and steam coming in as the first big driver, you know, as an as an increased performance from like manual labor. Then in the 20th century, we've seen the industry 2.0 breaking ground um, with bringing in the manufacturing line effectively. This was Henry Ford back in the days. You have electrical energy, you have division of labor. It was a huge improvement in productivity. And just in the last century, in the 70s, we had advanced electronics, robotics, IT, providing significantly more advanced and more effective automation solutions. So all that has really, really driven productivity and efficiency. But just in the last years, in the last couple of 10, 20 years, we've seen new tools like artificial intelligence, cloud connectivity, autonomous robotics, and many more driving for an additional wave of productivity gains. And this is what's covered under Industry 4.0 and what we'll dive in further today. So. Just to get it right, Industry 4.0 is not just a single initiative or a single effort, but it really is a plethora of technologies that uh, that make up this uh, this industrial wave. So we have, as I said, the robotics, the simulation, systems integration, uh, Internet of Things, cloud computing, additive manufacturing, augmented reality, big data. So all of this makes up Industry 4.0. If you ask me, is this really a sharp definition and is that is that really scientifically proven? Hard to say. I think that that sentence industry 4.0 or that phrase is significantly overused, um, but it has quite a lot of merit to it also in our industry. So what I want to show you today is some of the NDE 4.0 aspects we see already today in our everyday lives and that this is actually not just a futuristic thought that's up there, but really something that's tangible. So. Where do we come from? And um, just for explanation, our company is, is in the X-ray space. So I'm a radiography guy. Uh, I cannot um, I cannot speak to all the other methods. We will mainly talk about implementation examples in the X-ray space. But especially in X-ray, we come from a highly manual um, environment. So we talk about manual positioning of the tube, of the X-ray film, maybe of the IQIs and all the other things around it. Then we talk about a long um, exposure process. We talk about the film development, putting it in front of a reader, um, and then putting it in a film archive. All this is very time costly. It has a lot of consumable costs attached to it. You use um, toxic chemicals in the way, and then you need a lot of storage space around it. And all that makes uh, X-ray inspection or NDT a major bottleneck in many operations and a major pain. So of course, many people are looking at how can we how can we make this more efficient without at the same time sacrificing quality. Ideally, we are increasing quality while we do this. So when we talk about digitization or digitalization, we have to acknowledge that this is not a, this is not a one step process, but it can be broken down into the step of digitization, for example. So you have first you need to digitize the information. This can be done by, for example, putting in a digital detector uh, and replacing a film, a snippet of film. Um, next step, but then you need to organize the information. So you need to have some kind of like an IT backbone behind where you can aggregate all your, your X-ray data, your digital X-ray data. You can uh, save it in an annotated format so you don't need all these archives. So just by digitization, you're just moving from an analog format to a digital format, and you're finding smart ways to digitize your process too and find a digital archiving system. 
once you have done that, uh, you can look towards driving more uh, efficiency gains through digitalization. This is when you look at the process itself, not just on the components on the physical aspect, but really at the process. How can you put in automation steps? How can you make things faster? How can you streamline them? So digitalization really drives, um, it's, it's like in the pyramid, the, the lower layer is, um, is the digitization. The digitalization is the next step that builds on top of that. And only then is what we call digital transformation, the final step to really, really innovate um, your, your process um, in, a, in a disruptive way, I would say, and disruptive not in a negative way, but it's not an iterative way anymore. Digitization, digitalization in many cases is an iterative process, one step building on the other, while digital transformation can be highly, highly different. And this, for example, could be to bring artificial intelligence in to support uh, inspectors or operators to do better, to, to have a better decision-making process. So we're going to cover all steps of this journey. And if we look at uh, the X-ray process um, in specific, we can see that if we, if we bring in these different steps of the transformation, we are improving uh, the efficiency of the process. So if you look on the film level on top, you see you have to load the part, place the IQIs, expose the film, remove the film, develop it, evaluate it, store it. It's quite a lot of process steps. We could say this is the NDT 1.0. Um, then you go for the first step, we, we bring in digitization. So digitization means we have a digital detector and digital file formats. So just by that, um, quite a lot goes away. Um, you, you, you have digital files, you don't need to expose the film, you don't need to develop it. So you could say this is the NDT 2.0 world, where you have, we are in a digitized world. And it's the next step, um, we have digitalization. So we bring on in robotics or CNC controlled um, motion systems. We bring in um, data management systems, digital workflow solutions. We are in industry 3.0 or NDT 3.0 in this step. We are like kind of in the 70s now, if you look on the industry 4.0 uh, chart, uh, industry 4.0 chart. So only once you've done that, I mean, you've, you've significantly shortened down the process um, step you're now just down to loading a part um, clicking a button and unloading it and ev ev evaluating the images if you then go to um, to a full NDT 4.0 industry 4.0 world you could imagine that you implement artificial intelligence which means the evaluation step will move towards an AI environment uh, which means you effectively only need to load the part and unload it and you get back a result and if you had a robot loading it well there would be no steps left I'm not suggesting that this is what's happening anytime soon, but we can see how this is actually quite disruptive to the status quo as it currently is, and how technology is bringing in efficiency and productivity increases, and hopefully happening, uh, um, supporting at the same time to increase the quality. And this is practically explained how the different steps, digitization, digitalization, digital transformation could be applied to an um, X-ray process and how this very much aligns with the NET for, or, or industrial revolution stages. Please keep in mind that this is just for illustrative purposes and by no means is a scientific uh, definition of what the different stages are. So if you look at levels of automation, you could think of something very, very simple like a carriage uh, on the left or you have something much more sophisticated like a robot loading conveyor based solution that automatically loads parts uh, into, into an X-ray cabinet. There's many, many different shades of gray, but you can start from very simple to significantly more advanced. And obviously, then you can go even a step further and you have even more levels of automation, like on the left, uh, a dual robot approach where one, one, X, one robot carries the X-ray tube, the other robot carries the detector, it's significantly more automated. Or on the right, you see an inline feed-through system that automatically um, um, adapts to the part and and inspects it um, without the part, you know, um, having to leave the manufacturing line. But the X-ray system being directly integrated to the manufacturing line. This is on the on the right on the right side of the spectrum. So this is really the high-end automation um, solutions. 
but there is no one size fits all. It depends on the quantities. It depends, it, it, it depends on the layout of the manufacturing uh, line. It depends on the process, whether it's batch or a single part flow. Um, really, there is no right level of automation um, that fits everybody. It has to be determined on every individual case. And this brings us to the first key takeaways on the digitization and digitalization step. Um, those two steps, like just, just going to like industry 3.0, enables already a fast and repeatable inspection processes. This reduces part handling workload for operators. It includes, it reduces the inspection times. But keep in mind, if you are if you're automating beyond a certain level, it's really only feasible for higher inspection volumes. Um, if you just have one part a week, it probably doesn't make sense to have a robot. But um, we also, as a solution provider, have seen a couple of case studies or success studies. For example, one manufacturer of aerospace air ducts, they took um, six hours per part prior to digitization, uh, digitalization, digitization, and it was down to 20 minutes afterwards. Same for a turbine casting manufacturer um, who took 14 hours to inspect a single part using film who got down to four hours using digital detectors. So there's already a significant potential without even talking about industry 4.0, just by implementing automation systems, robotics, and digital solutions. That's already a great, great win. Um, once that is done, you can think about, okay, how do I then connect systems? How do I actually aggregate data? And how do I digitize or digitalize my whole process? And for this, we have to rethink how we do how do work because currently the step of evaluation or reading the images is many times directly integrated into the manufacturing step right at the system so this means we are on the critical path of of the parts being processed so a part a part can only process to the next step in the manufacturing line if it has been inspected and if if the reader is going for a toilet break the line is or you have buffer or some kind of waste in the system. But you can think about a process where parts are labeled or serialized, so you have traceability, and the parts are just moving through the system until they've reached the next station. The images then leave the physical layer and get transferred to the digital layer. And this is where they are on a server, for example, um, that can be local or in the cloud or in the bigger company network and you have a central storage system and a central routing system, and the review stations are connected to the server, which means you don't need to review directly at the system. You can review from your office, you can review from a different site, over the internet if you allow it, even from home office in, in, in extreme cases, but you have detached um, the physical world from the digital and decision-making world. And this gives a lot of examples, uh, a lot of um, advantages, of course, um, in both efficiency, but also in flexibility. You can, for example, have a central evaluation hub in one facility and service other facilities from that space. And it also allows that you directly have the results of your inspection, the inspection reports, the rework re sheets, the scrap documentation in digital format. You have it archived and documented. And once the decision is being done, it's being it's being transferred digitally to the manufacturing floor, and then the parts can move on to the next step. It allows big potential gains. And for that, you need to have the right IT infrastructure, like an end-to-end -end IT infrastructure. And this is, for example, an interpretation as we see it. You have your system with your acquisition software, your control software. You're acquiring your images. It moves to a server. This is where you have a storage. You have a review station connected to the server. You have a potential connection to your MES or ERP system, so to your manufacturing enterprise system or enterprise resource uh, planning system to communicate the inspection results. So forget the times where you need to have a, a little piece of paper where you need to put a stamp or a sign or a seal on. You can just um, transfer these results automatically and document it in digital format. And obviously, if you are um, connected to other facilities or to other inspection hubs or you have external partners, you can have cloud access for those of you who allow it. If you're on an aerospace and defense infrastructure, maybe that's not for you, but in other areas like automotive or oil and gas, it's pretty normal to be connected to other entities. 
And obviously, once you have all the files digi digitally, you can generate reports automatically. So you can apply um, automated image processing, you can measure performance, uh, like image performance, you can document it, and you can automatically put it in, in reports without somebody doing that uh, anymore, uh, like manually. So you don't need to, to you save significant amounts of time. I mean, just confirming the image quality through um, uh, image quality indicators sometimes can take 15 to 20 minutes. If you have all that in an automated workflow or process, it can take just less than a minute. So that's significant time savings. And by having that, put that into your inspection programs and inspection sequences, you don't have to remember that somebody does that and puts it in a spreadsheet or even worse on a piece of paper next to the system, but you can put intervals into the system. So you say every eight hours, you need to run such a long-term stability test. Only if the test is passed, you can move ahead with the production. If the test is not passed, the system is blocked and a level three has to look at the issue. So there's a lot of nice policies that you can embed into such digital solutions. So digitalization on the next step helps you significantly with uh, efficiency if you implement it right. Also, we are reducing your consumables. You get higher inspection quality because you can uh, you can put in like automated uh, sequences or, or, or macros inside, and it also allows you significantly better documentation of your inspection results. But digitalization also has its challenges. I mean, imagine you are cutting down your inspection time from 14 to four hours per part. This is great. Your management will probably say, amazing. So we can increase the throughput by, by, by two, three times. But then the question is, okay, then I generate also two, three times more images. So who's going to read all these images? Who's going to do all the interpretation? And this is where lack of skilled personal kicks in. Um, we need to deal with that. We need to deal with that problem of the increased throughput of the of the acquisition phase, and we need to find a solution on the evaluation and reading phase. And this is where um, automated decision making or assisted uh, decision making comes into place, where we use um, ADR, automated defect recognition, or artificial intelligence, so-called AI solutions, to help operators to make better decisions and faster decisions, and this is reducing the amount of time needed to actually evaluate images. And uh, for this, um, artificial intelligence is a great tool. So there is on this, um, there is another presentation of our company on artificial intelligence and ADR. I highly recommend um, that you have a look um, how that actually could be applied on um, radiography or X-ray images. Um, all I want to see here is there's a huge potential, even with assisted defect recognition, we have estimated that roughly 50 to 60% of the total time needed to read an image can be saved by applying AI. So I would highly recommend um, looking at this other presentation or webinar of ours where you can learn more. But Closing that chapter and going to back towards Industry 4.0, the main part of Industry 4.0 is what we call the cyber physical feedback loop. That might sound complicated, but I will walk you through very quick. So your system and your part is in the physical world. It's a physical system, it's a physical part. Once you put the part inside the system and you are taking a digital radiography image, you are digitizing industry, right? Remember the, 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 the first step, NDE 4.0, you're digitizing your physical part into a digital world, and then you're applying data processing on it. We are, we are then in the next steps, we are in the industry 3.0. This is where you're actually applying image processing annotation features on that image. So you do something to a digital image in a digital world. And what industry 4.0 then is, that you generate a movement, that you change something in the physical world. So you are closing the gap, physical to digital, digital to physical. You are driving, the, you are driving the feedback loop and making a change. And this is this is the core concept. And I will try to give you some examples. For example, you have a casting machine, let's say in an automotive environment. You are producing um, these automotive shock towers, for example, and you are putting it into an X-ray machine. Uh, let's say the X-ray machine is on the other side of the shop floor. So you're producing 
and they only arrive at the x-ray system a day later because they need to cool down, they need to be stored, they need to be um, maybe a little bit processed, and then they arrive a day later. You apply the x-ray process and you look at the results and you're saying, oh my God, the quality is really bad. I have a lot of porosities. This is all junk, all rejectable scrap. You call your colleague at the casting and say, hey, um, you, you, had a, you have a problem in your parts. They say, okay, tell me the batch number. You give them the batch number, it's from a day before. Guess what happened? They look into the x-rays, they, they look into the casting system, they found out the mold has worn out and they are producing bad parts due to that. So the problem is they have been continuously producing bad parts until the time we found out that something is wrong. So let's say there's a day of production or one and a half days of production is wasted because we had that information too late. Now let's think different. Um, they are reconfiguring their workshop. They found out their problem. So now they are putting in the X-ray system directly next to the casting system. They put in a robot. So the robot takes out the part from the casting system, does some deburring on it. Maybe, maybe you know, gets cleans it up a little bit, puts it directly into the X-ray system. In the X-ray system, we have an ADR, so an, an automatic image processing solution that evaluates the images and automatically gives back the number of porosities and the decision whether it's okay or not okay. So with that decision, we know roughly 20, 30 seconds after the casting process, we know whether we are producing scrap or not. And that all that data is being fed back into the MES and ERP system. So we are learning a lot, a lot at the same time. And if there's a problem, the casting specialists are automatically informed that there's an issue and they can either stop production or correct the problem. And the good thing is, as they are starting to troubleshoot and changing things at the casting system, we'll see an immediate response at the X-ray system and can have a feedback loop that really is incredibly rapid and drives results. That is, that is very helpful. And hopefully at one point in time, we learned enough about the data that we have figured out how maybe the casting system can optimize itself. So we are an R&D pro project in Germany where we are trying to figure out how can evaluation automatically help or the inspection process automatically help to improve the casting system. So we have a closed loop that will optimize itself. And this ob obviously re results in us thinking about data. And if we look at the value of data, remember our example before, we had on the, on the X axis, we have the time. So if we look at a result a couple of days later, the value, the Y axis is quite low because this is not really actionable data. We, we, we are too late. This is, um, this is nice historic data, but it doesn't really help us to change the problem, fix the problem now. So we want to go as close towards the incident as possible. Ideally, we want to be in real time, which means mere seconds to minutes after, after the incident occurred. And this is what we are trying to, to achieve by bringing inspection closer to the production and providing data insights to our operations colleagues. And we hear a lot. There's a nice thing and say like big data. Our data is the oil of industry 4.0. We have to be very careful that we don't go into the big data fallacy. Data itself is worth nothing because we need to bring in the, the, the knowledge and the know-how to structure the data. So we need to sort it, we need to arrange it and we need to present it visually. This is incredibly important to actually make it actionable data. So it's not enough to just save everything and capture all data. We have to be very selective in what kind of data we capture and why we capture it. But once we've done that, we've actually created something that is an industrial sensor. And this is this light bulb here. So our X-ray system has become an industrial sensor. We are providing data insights to our colleagues that are optimizing the production process. We are not only seen as an, I mean, today we are only seen as an end of line quality assurance tool. So NDE is that necessity we need to have to give a pass or fail decision. This is incredibly important and this will always in the future also be our main objective. But we can generate significantly more value by giving our colleagues insights into their manufacturing processes and parts. And this is what NDE or NDT can do become an industrial sensor and add value beyond what we currently do. 
And with all that, we have really nice ways of visualizing that um, to actually show the, um, the, the trends, show the data, show um, scrap rates, show hotspots in your parts, and show people what's going on inside your parts. The extremely value and valuable. And if we are talking about this, we are really talking about industry 4.0. This is something the last in the last years nobody has done. That data went to waste. Nobody used that data. So let's tap into the value of this data and use it properly. And that brings us towards the topic of digital twins. So a digital twin or digital shadow is the digital representation of anything physical. For example, one of your parts. You can create a digital twin of your part, but also on machines. Digital twins can have machines too. So our, our machines, for example, have a digital version of itself to make sure you can program it offline. And that is something um, um, we have done with some of our partners is that we've created a digital simulation environment where we are simulating based on a, a CAD world, um, we are simulating results. So on the top, uh, on the lower left corner, you can see a, a digital um, twin model of the X-ray system with a part inside and the X-ray beam. And based on the positions in the digital twin model, you can simulate X-ray solutions. And then you can import the whole inspection sequence to the real system. So in the future, you do not have to stop your line and you have to stop inspecting to create a new technique, but you go to your digital twin environment, you load your part, you do your inspection, you optimize the views, and then you are um, exporting it to the real system and applying it in the field. And that, um, to just close off that topic, and that obviously is a huge, huge gain. And this is the topic of simulation in Industry 4.0, so another Industry 4.0 topic. And uh, when we come towards the topic of additive manufacturing, computer tomography becomes hugely important. So CT being a technology where you are using um, automation systems or robotics to automatically um, scan parts, take a lot of projections while you're turning the parts, and then creating a three-dimensional representation of those parts. And I can tell you what we are talking about here is a digital twin. We are talking about the digital twin of a welding line of a casting part or an additive manufactured part. So computer tomography is a major enabler technology to build proper digital twins of your parts. So it, it, also, it also falls under the industry 4.0 category. And this is then where really digital twins kick in. Um, you can actually simulate trajectories. Um, you can simulate how those images look like and um, provide actionable action or, or, or provide actions on that data. But you don't need to hurry, you don't need to experimentally um, figure it out um, in the real world. You can do it in a digital world. And what examples is that? Um, you can optimize the results. So what you see on the left and on the right is the same amounts of projections in CT, um, just in different locations. So on the left side, you have a classic like sampling in, a, in like a felt cap reconstruction way. So you are, um, you, are, you are choosing projections that are not optimized, just regularly, um, regularly um, put on this orb. On the right side, we have used artificial intelligence to actually put the projections in a way that they are optimized to get the much in, the most information out of that data. How do we do that? Um, by importing the CAT model of the part and then using AI-based optimizers to find the best trajectory. And see on the right and the left, the same amount of projections is a huge increase in quality. And this then leads to um, to, to even better um, inspection based on digital tools that help you to optimize. So you want to make sure that, for example, you don't have views that have a bad gray value distribution because you have two of these pillars here overlapping. This is a much better view than this one. We as humans know that. So if we are, if we are setting up a scan, we are automatically setting it up in a way so that we would see it like this and not like this. 
but why not have an AI or a digital twin environment helping you to find out the perfect view to inspect a certain area? And, and what you see here is how we are actually getting there by using AI from a baseline model with 1,400 projections down to 100 projections. So what you see here is an optimizer that is really reducing the amounts of projections until we've reached an ideal result. And then you can see how we got from a baseline 1,400 projections scan to a 100 projection scan that we still can see the same features. So this is 1 14th, no, 140th of, of the scan time. It's, it's absolutely significant. It's 1 14th, sorry. It's 1 14th of the scan time compared baseline model to optimized model. If you would have not optimized, this is how it would have looked like. You would have not seen anything. But you can get significant time improvements by using simulation and digital twins to apply it to your technique generation. So this is another aspect of Industry 4.0. And with that, you can, of course, also optimize X-ray parameters. So what we see as a human and we think is a good image, we can actually quantify an algorithm. So you can put in um, quantification um, um, parameters like penetration, overexposure, um, a gray value range, number of peaks and others to actually optimize an X-ray image so that it gets, gives you the best performance, the best sharpness, for example. So you can optimize all the different parameters like KV, MA, uh, pre-filtering, um, binning, and many others to automatically derive the best possible solution. And we have actually done that um, uh, in our software so that you have a lot of parameters like X-ray tube parameters, detector parameters, and, and then, then what you get out is a quality score based on gray value distribution, number of peaks, signal to noise ratio, sharpness ratio. And what you can see here is an optimized image. Um, you actually, um, I think you can, yeah, the, the, the old values are here in, in the brackets. You can see that you have increased the signal to noise ratio from 7 to 139. Significant improvements based on automatic, um, automatic optimization of the X-ray results. And this is really, really helpful. Of course, a good level three, a good level two knows these things from heart, but we are in a, in a world of lack of labor. So you might not have super experienced people. So you want to give them digital tools that help them to come to better decisions or at least get a better image in the first place. And also it takes the burden and workload away from the experienced people by automating some of the things. So digital twins really drive value. Uh, you can create new inspection programs without occupying the system. You can collect information of, it, of your part in a digital twin. You can optimize inspection techniques prior to actually having the part physically and, and really verify inspectability even before building it. So if your design colleagues come to you, can I inspect this part? You can actually say, okay, send me the cat. You load it into your system and you are verifying, can I actually inspect it? That's incredibly helpful. And this then, um, is a big uh, enabler uh, for additive manufacturing, which hands down probably the only inspection technology that works properly is computer tomography. Um, you can use CT to build um, um, a digital twin of your part, look really deep into the part and find indications, defects, and um, visualize them and quantify them in a nice way. And when we talk about quantification, you can do obviously a lot of, a lot of nice cal calculations, computations to really quantify how good is it? And not just saying it's good, it's bad, but no, how good is it really? And how can I prove that? And with that, you can do again, closing the loop, you digitize, you have a digital twin, you can run simulations again, and you can see, okay, when will my part break if I put it under cyclic loading, for example? And just to give you an idea of an of of how that how that really could look like, um, this is a project where our NDT system, our CT system, is directly integrated to the manufacturing system. It's a DED system, so direct energy deposition, a 3D printing process. So in this idea, uh, a DED system is building the part. Then 
a CT scan is being applied directly in the 3D printing cell. The results are communicated to a drilling machine. So the drilling machine or CNC machine is drilling a potential defect out of the DED part. And then the DED robot is coming back and rewelding that area back to the NDT system, back to the DED system, and so on. This is this is huge because imagine such a DED process can take three to four days. Imagine in the first one hour or so we are introducing a defect, we might throw away the whole part. So we want to make NDT as an industrial sensor that's supervising the production process. And this is the big paradigm shift because in the past, um, this is not an I mean this is not an end of line inspection. This is an inspection that happens online at the system and it's not a proper it's not a real NDT step. It's actually a monitoring step. And this is again this idea of having NDT as an industrial sensor on top of its quality thing. So this brings us back to Industry 4.0, and I promised you we want to touch on a lot of points. So let's just quickly recall. We talked about robotics uh, automation. We talked a lot about simulation. We talked about systems integration just right now, implementing NDT systems directly into the manufacturing line. We talked about Internet of Things. This means connecting um, different systems together into a, into a holistic production cloud system. So we've seen that with the casting machine. We've talked about cloud computing. Uh, obviously, you can use your whole data management to the cloud if you want, if you allow it. It has some advantages, some disadvantages. We talked about additive manufacturing and CT being an enabler solution to actually bring additive manufacturing to the production world. We have not so much talked about augmented reality because it is not yet um, commercially super relevant in NDT, but we are starting to see first applications like exploring a 3D part using uh, AR um, goggle, using AR to do service and to do remote inspection. We've talked a lot about big data and how data can help you to make better decisions. And cybersecurity for itself, it's a mandatory point. Obviously, with all these digital initiatives, your IT system needs to be prepared or your IT departments to actually make sure your data is protected and not taken away. So as you can see, we kind of touch, touched every individual topic of, of the official industry 4.0 definition. So it's really, really fair to say that industry 4.0 has arrived in NDE and the individual parts itself can drive a lot of value. What's really important, they don't drive a lot of value for everybody the same. If you're in one industry uh, like automotive and mass market, um, autom automated robotics and big data or AI might be the biggest value driver. If you are in the aerospace world where you have super expensive parts and lower volume, simulation and system integration might be a much bigger value driver. So it's incredibly smart to look at this whole industry, industry 4.0 technology plethora and pick the right technologies that matter for you and drive value for you. And with that said, our company has put up an NDT 4.0 strategy that includes automation, robotics, cloud connectivity, simulation, artificial intelligence, and computer tomography to add value for our customers. And we are pursuing that actively on the R&D side and in our solutions. And I want to thank you for your time. This time, just digital. Hopefully, on the next conference, we see ourselves in person again. I want to draw your your attention to to two interesting things. One of it is our free um, X-ray uh, app or, or toolbox that's available for iOS and Google Play. Um, it's a part of the digitization effort for our customers. It doesn't cost anything, so this is not advertisement. Um, it has um, calculations inside in it. It has a glossary. It, you can do some conversions. You have all the IQI calculations inside. I highly recommend you download it. Um, it's called. It's found under NDT X-ray Toolbox online. It's a nice tool to make your life easier in a digital way. And also, I want to invite you, if anybody of you would like to get a free digitalization assessment to just see where do we stand, what return of invest could I have, um, I'm making this offer to anybody in this webinar exclusively. Um, send us an email with the keyword digitalization to our email address, and we'll be happy to 
support you. Thank you for your time. See you next time. Have a great day.